everybody. Nice to see you. Welcome to the Horn Hangouts. It's fantastic that you've joined us for an evening of low horn specialized whatever. We'll see what it's going to be. I was just saying to all the guests today, it's amazing. Could you imagine a few years ago, even collecting a whole group of low horn players who are proud of being low horn players to hang out together live online with all of you. And without further ado, I would like to introduce to you all of my wonderful guests for the evening. Hey guys, where are you? How are you doing today? Oh. Hey. hey. You got something for us? <laughs> How isn't there a song that goes, How low can you go? How low can you go? <laughs> so it's absolutely wonderful to see you all. I can't actually see the, the feed on Facebook, I'm not sure why that is. So if you're watching on Facebook, then um, great. Uh, if you're not, then I'm yeah, then it doesn't matter. Then you're not with us anyway. Um, George, maybe you could have a quick look at that. I cannot see the Facebook feed, but um, whatever. <laughs> I can see all of you on on the live chat. It's amazing how many of you have joined us. We have Catherine Wu. We have Sam from Cumbria in the UK. Alexandra's again back. Mathieu from Stavanger in Norway. Philip is drinking Weissburgunder. Yeah, from Sydney. That's a very late one in Sydney. Hi, Elliot. Um, hello from Germany, Cincinnati. I mean, this is really quite amazing, you guys talking, talking amongst yourselves, discussing what you're drinking. May I introduce you one by one to my amazing guests before we get to our low horn, um, our low horn questions. Um, where are we? So actually, I'm going to start on my picture because my picture on the left of me is Adrian Diaz Martin. Is that the right? Is that Diaz? Okay. There you are. Diaz Martinez. And Adrian is Spanish and is low horn in the NDR, the um, Norddeutsche Rundfunk. And it's actually quite funny because there are four of us who play low horn in German orchestras, but, and none of us are German. So we'll, we'll discuss that later. Adrian, welcome. Thank you. <laughs> it's great to hear. On my other side is somebody with a harp, and that's Barbara Justline Curry with Hi. a very. Funny actually, you're the most German of us all, right? Yes, I also have my, my what is this? My. Berliner Biergarten beer with me. And I hope that's real beer in there, not Apfelschorle. It, it is, it is a Stella, so yes. <laughs> welcome, welcome. And then um, down one line, I have Jim Smelser, second horn of the Chicago Symphony Orchestra. Hello. Jim, this is, this is such an honor. You're not such, oh, what have you got? Okay, Diet Coke in a beer mug. Okay, well, <laughs> <laughs> pause. Now, J Jim's pretty German as well. He can actually, we actually speak in German when we, it's just for the fun of it. Stimmt's mein Schatz. <laughs> Welcome, Jim. You're not a big social media guy, so it's a real honor that you're with us. Thank you. Glad to be here. Next to, Jim, next to Jim, in my picture anyway, is um, is Joseph Miron, who's uh, low horn in the DSO, the Deutsche Symphony Orchestra. Hi, Joe. Hello. Welcome. This is, you watch the Hangouts all the time. I know you do. You're a great supporter, but it's your first time on one. Is it scary? Not yet. Nah, not yet. <laughs> this, this could change. <laughs> okay, and then we have Rachel Childers. Hi, Rachel. So nice to see you. Nice From the Boston, you. Boston Symphony Orchestra Second Horn. And uh, I know there's so many great low horn players out there, but today I just invited the ones that, I'm, that I've played with recently, <laughs> like Rachel and Jason, um, and uh, some, some Berliners. So I hope no one's offended. I love you all, but tonight we just thought we'd keep it, keep it local and keep it in the family. Rachel, it was amazing playing with you this summer. It was a real treat. It really was and so much fun. I brought um, kombucha. Kombucha. Okay. Yeah. Very, very healthy. That's very good. Um, then I've got Francois Bastian. Hi, Francois. Bonjour. Bonsoir. Uh, what are you drinking? Gin tonic, I hope. Yes. Aww. <laughs> we have a gin tonic history, Francois and I. Uh, all very kosher, don't worry. Um, Francois is second horn in the Bavaria, Bavarian Radio Orchestra, the Bayerische Rundfunk, and he's a French, French horn player, a true French, French horn player. Jason Snyder. Hi, Jason. Welcome. Hi. Good to see you. Fourth horn in the Boston Symphony Orchestra, who played second when I came to visit because I was too scared to play any other any other part. Of John Williams movie night. <laughs> and then it all turns out to be the same because it's all unison. So. Yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, but I didn't know that before. I was still happy to sit down on the end and just hang on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was totally a total, total career highlight. Thank you for that, you guys. It really was. Oh, that's great. And the infamous, famous, amazing, awesome Denise Tryon. Hi, Denise. Denise. Cheers. Okay, what are you drinking? Rosé all day. Oh, I... <laughs> <laughs> That sounds pretty good to me. That sounds pretty good to me. Um, anyway, uh, just uh, welcome. Uh, George, if you could check the, the Facebook feed. We are not live on Facebook. I don't know why. Um, it's not the end of the world because we can put it on Facebook after, but uh, it would be nice if we could check that. All of you on the chat, welcome. Thank you. Tell your friends to come over here and watch it on the chat, um, on the on the on the on the website, website, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. It's a nightmare, you guys. It's a lot of social media. Anyway, last but not at all least, Greg Rusa outside in his garden in LA, second horn of the Los Angeles Philharmonic. And you've doctored your t-shirt for us, Greg. Yeah. I was just say on tour, but I, I, I was sure it was at home, but <laughs> block it out. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness my goodness so how you've got a corona <laughs> beer okay i am just going to um to, to work out this uh this facebook little facebook problem we have and um but i would what i'd love is that you guys say where you met where you met each other last for example denise and barb yes okay uh, I, I, I'll start only because I've already had some beer and that's how we met. Um, <laughs> we were we were both auditioning for Andre's, the job that Andre got, um, the low horn about, I think it's already five years ago, which is crazy. Um, and five had, years ago, my goodness. Actually, so, Andre's supposed to be here. I don't know where he is. That's just like, never mind. <laughs> So I, I decided I had about three weeks notice to go um, to go audition and I, I borrowed a, an Alexander from Paul Ingram um, and just kind of learned how to play that horn very quickly and, and not very well, unfortunately. But I met Denise uh, at the audition and I was so happy to see to see you and, and to meet yeah. and have, have another um, another uh, girl there that was nice as well. And then, yeah. afterwards and we, then had, we, we had a beer. <laughs> and we had a beer and then we played uh, quartets with uh, uh, Stefan and Fergus. Mm -hmm. that, yeah. That's right. You were you took over the horn room, and those that's two right. never hang around. They but they, they really when I came in, I was like, who are these people playing quartets? And it was Stefan and Fergus. So you encouraged them to to hang on and play. <laughs> that, was, that was really great. I mean, we we got to you know stay afterwards, and we tried their their Alexanders and on the um, on the stage for a while. And I was a little bit mortified because I just had not played very well in the audition. But um, and then we played quartets and it, and it was great. And it was a really fun hang. And I was so impressed by your horn room. Yeah, yeah. it's a bit, I went in there the other day and it's a bit it's a bit sort of muffy. It's like muff. It's like it smells of horn players that used to sweat in there a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Francois, you know, don't you? You've been you've been in there, and yeah. Adrian as well, and Joe. Am I ex exaggerating? Um, yes, it's been <laughs> nice to be there because it's like a, a child childhood dream to be one one day in the horn room in the Berlin Philharmonic. So when you get the invitation to play in the orchestra, it's like the first day. It's, it's almost more important to have been in the room than to have been on stage with the orchestra. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, well, next time we'll clear up before you come and if it's so important to you. So. Um, yeah, and Jim and, uh, and Greg, when was the last time you saw each other, you guys? I was thinking it was the one, the one uh, when, for Dale Clevenger's retirement party. It was the last time that I saw Jim. But before that, it had been like 2000. I left Chicago in 2000, so it's been, been a while. <laughs> right, that's right. And... Uh... Greg's the tallest, the tallest one here. And Jason, I know Jason from, from Lyric in Chicago when he was there. When did you leave, Jason? When did you go to Boston? 2007. 2007, yeah. So, yeah. and I know Denise because she came to DePaul and gave a great master class for our students. She's famous. And I know the other names, but not in person except for on my screen here. So, <clears throat> oh, well, Jim, really, thank you for coming because I know you really don't do this sort of thing very often. Uh, actually, never. <laughs> <laughs> um, we did a horn hangout. 
you right? did you yeah. did i i was honored that was actually really nice getting all you guys together in chicago in person in the days where we could travel right <laughs> um and rachel and and jason how do you guys know when's the last time you saw each other a well, couple weeks ago i guess in person should i tell With george jason? yeah tell the story tell, tell. well my son went um danger biking um downhill biking on a uh, sledding hill and uh was overconfident and crashed and had to go to the er and had a concussion and, and we practice. were having a, a social distant walk we just, that yeah. day and uh, yeah. yeah it was it's a yeah. adventurous end to our to the Jason last time had, i saw her yeah oh no he, my son's okay he was running around the next day he's totally fine uh, oh but Jason's here to hang out with us now but we live really close, just like not even a five minute walk from each other. Oh, oh gosh. <laughs> um, yeah, and who else have we got that had the, no, Joe, do you, know, have you met anybody before? <laughs> I've met just here. Ah, where and do you guys meet each other? Denise was with the Philadelphia a few years ago. They played in the concert house. Yes. And we had hamburgers afterwards. Yes. We got a huge bill. Oh. Um, um, and I've met Francoise. Um, and call out to my colleagues in Boston. I studied with Harry Shapiro. Oh, so wow. Nice, nice to see you. <laughs> and I've heard James from the audience. We got to James, go I think you can call him Jim. You can say do to him. Right. Okay. Of course. <laughs> nice to meet you. You too. Nice to meet you, Joe. Okay, so everybody sort of knows somebody. That that's good. That's good. Can we? Uh, uh, Dylan Hart and Annie Bosler are watching in LA. Hey, hello, you guys. Joanna's watching hello. from Athens, Greece. Laura Brennis is watching. Who knows Laura? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's so great. And Heidi says we're looks like we're ready to celebrate Wagner's birthday. Well, actually, we are. <laughs> <laughs> we can't wait. So um, hang on. I've just got a, I've got, George is trying to log into my, um, I've got it. Ah, okay. So now we might, this might work on Facebook. Hang on a sec. Uh, bear with me. This is quite stressful. I must tell you, I must say. Sarah, I don't know how you do this after, after we've been trying with the Methorns and we had such a bad snafu last week. I was well, terrified. We are, we are online on the website and it's no problem. It's just Facebook. There's been a Zoom update and Facebook is being a bit funny these days. So um, anyway, we are live and we have a lot of people watching. Um, and we have a question actually from Joan. She says, hello, do low horns tend to play different equipment than their high horn counterparts? Who would like to take that question? Not me. <laughs> Go on, Jason. Oh, oh, Jim, Jim. Okay, first hand. Right. I have a very easy answer. It's in, in Chicago. The answer is no, exactly the same equipment. So Jason, go ahead with a better answer. <laughs> we, we play, Rachel and I play the same horn and the same mouthpiece as the, the rest. Well, I mean, they're not the same brand, but two horns we play um, are a different brand just by coincidence. I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, we play these Alaski mouthpiece that um, I don't even know if they're still making them anymore. But uh, we play on Rauk double horns. And yeah, I've had people ask me like we, for recitaling chamber music, we just stay on the same equipment. Yeah, it's too complicated to switch around. And you never know from week to week if you're going to need high notes or low notes. So why, why switch it up? Here, here, Boston Symphony Orchestra has to play all the, all the, whole, all the movie stuff. And it was so high. Oh my goodness, Greg, you know all about that as well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> No second or fourth ones in that. Actually, Greg, I must say, Francois, Adrian, and Joe, Greg is one of us. Greg, tell us why. Oh, he's frozen. No, he's not. He's I'm, frozen. I'm one of you. Oh, well, uh, with the horn wise? Yeah, the with, the, with, <laughs> with, your, with your equipment. Yeah, so yeah, a couple of years ago, you got, he helped me hook up with a, a nice Alex. So, um, and that, of course, Andrew Bain plays an Alex. He's played one forever. So, um, it's much easier, I think, um, and it's trying to. I mean, it was an adjustment for me because I played Geyer Raptor or Schmidt horns forever, so it's definitely a a, a new bag of tricks to play. So, but yeah. it, it, I think it helps match everybody. Um, but we have a mixed section, so we 
you know, we have a Lewis and we have a couple, a couple of Rauk and a Hill and a couple of Alex's. And so we're, we're kind of a mixed, mixed bag of sections. Doesn't sound like it though. I love playing with you guys. I should be there this week. I know we miss you. Oh, and you know, I miss the LA Phil horns, but mostly I miss the bunt cake. Well, when you come back, we'll have a bun cake in every flavor they make. So. Okay, that sounds good to me. That sounds very good to me. So there's the questions coming in, of course, about the mouthpiece. Do we need bigger mouthpieces? Denise, what would you say to that? We've got to have a mouthpiece question. Yeah, right. Uh, I mean, I don't think you need a bigger mouthpiece in order to play in the low register. I think it's whatever works for you. I do know that I tend to play um, a very large rim, but... Um, but I have quite thin lips and it, it works for me up in the high register. So I think it's whatever works for you. Good. Anybody want to add any mouthpiece things to that? Don't be shy. I think for, for me for at the Met, um, I know that Ugo and I both play uh, the Loli font mouthpieces. Um, around Loli, like Loli font. Yeah. Loli font. And, yeah but uh, how, how do we say that? Loli font is perfect. It's perfect. Good. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I play, I mean, I love, I love the store there in Paris too. It's, they have so many Alex's to try back there. Uh, the last time I was there, I just tried so many wonderful horns and I wanted to buy all of them, but um, I couldn't. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I think Ugo is also playing maybe a, a B10. I'm playing an A10. And I definitely know for, for at the Met uh, that Eric and Javier, the first and the third, uh, play triple horns and they have a smaller mouthpiece. Uh, Eric's is a little bit smaller, but you know, he's always playing all those really high notes and, and you know, I, I try to stay below a third space C whenever possible. <laughs> <laughs> Is that your motto in life? Yeah, it's in my, Michelle Baker used to always say, it's not in my contract to play a high whatever note. <laughs> Yeah, but you know what? Then you we we wouldn't last a moment in the in the in the Boston or or LA Phil. I'll tell you. Well, truth be told, I was actually always more of a high horn player before playing. You horn. played first so. horn. Actually, a lot of you played first horn for 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 a lot of the time. You were first horn in Jerusalem, right? Yeah, third horn and associate. Yeah, but okay. always but Joe. Played, yeah, and Joe. Oh, I played in Jerusalem too. I know. I played well, every position. I, I played, I was hired on third and then the principal horn at the time didn't want to play things like, you know, the Midsummer Night's Dream and stuff. So he said, hey, how about you play it? And so I wonder if it's the same principal horn. <laughs> Maybe. Um, Denise, Denise, there's a question for you coming. It's not a music question, but it needs to be answered. Um, it says, um, no music. there's some sort of crackling going on. I don't know who it is. I think it might be you, Barb, is it? Can, can you hear that? We we banned, Greg had wind chimes and we banned those. So I don't know who it is. Anyway, no problem. Uh, okay, ready for this, Denise? Yes. The judge in New Jersey has asked, what color is on the wall of Denise's room? He loves it. <laughs> um, it's sort of a teal sort of color. I love really like a brilliant color. And actually in my normal non-music reading glasses, which I have my music reading glasses on now, but my Normal glasses have nice, nice blue in there. So blue is definitely my favorite color. Okay, so, so you match the wall. I match the wall always. Okay, I try we, to blend there in. There you go. Okay, so we've had mouth, we've had mouthpiece question, and we've had, um, we've had the color on the wall question. I've got another question for you guys. I think everyone's going to have to answer this. If we have a break, do we have a break? I mean, a break in your mouthpiece, not a break in the hangout. What notes do you shift at? Adrian, you go first. You know it already. <laughs> Me? No, no, you don't have a break. <laughs> Actually, I don't have in the lower register. No, he really doesn't. This guy does not have a break. No. Of course, there are some notes I don't like at all, but but I, I don't have a break. I would say when whenever you have a break, just <laughs> the way I like to think is to be brave and, and be more offensive with that and not, not let the break, like, you. Yeah. So. yeah. No, he, he really plays very, very organically through it. <sighs> We're jealous of that. Um, Francois, what about you? Uh, uh, commit between F sharp and G, the regist low register. So Shostakovich five and Don Quixote, you know it. It's not my not, not my cup of tea. Yeah. What, what, what do you do about it? I do what, what you told me. It's like uh, uh, doing the you. iron. <laughs> <laughs> the iron from the for the shirts is like doing with more with more um, 
insisting more, yes, and uh, moving yeah. more. Yeah, and yeah. Like, uh, what Adrian already said, just you have to make a better bet with your with your. Yeah, I know. I I have actually quite a few breaks, just mi but mini ones. Greg, how about you? Do you have a Greg? Greg has an amazing overture because Greg actually insets here. Yeah. You're yeah. you're a phenomenon. Oh, I'm gonna go that far. I I think for me that I have a switch like at the bottom of the, right at the bottom of the staff. And it's only for if you're trying to play loudly, I have to kind of shift a little bit to really get uh, a loud sound out. But otherwise, I try and just kind of work through it. Yeah, yeah. Okay, uh, Jason. It's like it's like show and tell. You and then you. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we're airing our dirty laundry. Where is yeah, of course great? we are. That we're on a horn hangout. Come on. <laughs> well, I have one that kind of exists in between. A harmonic really like between the middle c and the e i have to do, kind of adjust my jaw you know on the f horn and it kind of is there on every horn that harmonic um so i use different fingerings to get around that there's certain harmonics that are harder to bump through for me so i try to dodge them if i can um and i have a little bit of a break at the top of the treble staff too like right between e and f once I'm past that into the high range, I feel much better. Mm -hmm. um, but when I was a kid, I had a setup like Greg was talking about up through grad school, actually, where I set the mouthpiece into my bottom lip. And I didn't have a break up until the top of the treble staff. All the way down, I could play um, things that gave a lot of other, most people trouble. I didn't have the break. And then once I sort of fixed that embouchure setting, I got all the same breaks that everyone else had. And I had to figure out how to smooth through them. So you guys, I have good news. We are live on Facebook. Finally. Well done, George. Uh, everybody, welcome. Can we maybe actually welcome our Facebook listeners how we welcome the website listeners? Oh. Come on, come on, come on. Ready? Okay. <clears throat> welcome to everyone on Facebook. We are holding a low horn hangout hangout. Lone horn, low horn horn hangout. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> How did that sound? Please let us know. It's so nice to see you all. We had a few Facebook problems. Zoom has done an update and everything's different. But I, you are live on Facebook and, um, and we've done all the introductions already. So if any of you watching can help us with the introductions on Facebook, you can write who everybody is and where they play. OK, that's your uh, trivia quiz for now on the live Facebook feed. So I see all these people. Jez has joined from, um, from Birmingham and uh, Pangalotis set up. Felopolis, uh, the names are really actually quite hard. Michael Barnett, Sara Pereira, Rodriguez, Corinna Folke, Hugo Valverde is watching. Hola, Hugo, from Hola. the Met. <laughs> so, Hugo, could you write in the chat, please, um, who everybody is? Because we, we were a bit late getting onto Facebook and we've done the introductions already. So uh, maybe you could explain who everybody is and where they play. That would be amazing. We are talking about embouchure breaks and we're airing our dirty low horn laundry. Um, and we've actually, you've missed, you, you, okay, Joe, Joe, you look like you smell dirty laundry. Are you, <laughs> are you thinking about your break? Um, yeah. It's been so long since I've played that I don't know where it is. Um, but, <laughs> but I think it used to be, be uh, I had trouble going from the low C to the D, but I just worked through it. You just go slow and I, I find I, I had to start doing something with my jaw. I didn't start out as a low horn player, but Norbert Hauptmann told me, oh, you'll be happier to be a low horn player. Aww. So I had to figure out how to do it. And a lot of it involves actually putting the jaw out a little bit and changing the airstream. Good, good tips. By the way, someone wrote in and said, is Norbert Hauptmann going to be on your low horn hangout? And I just thought, can you imagine explaining how to get onto a Zoom chat to Norbert Hauptmann? No. <laughs> can you imagine those of you who know him? <laughs> anyway, we love Norbert, um, but Norbert has never, he can't even use his mobile phone. So, but it's his birthday tomorrow. So, uh, so who hasn't outed their breaks yet? Rachel? Rachel doesn't uh, have one. She doesn't uh, have one. I no. Do. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I also was not a natural low horn player. Um, and so mine was always the A below middle C. 
So Brahms' tragic overture like shot pain through my heart whenever I tried to play it. Uh, <laughs> long time, still don't like to play it. So what, did, what, what is loud it? Loud A's. What are your tricks? What about your tricks? What do you? Well, kind of like Francois, just like ironing it out, uh, ironing out on either side and really just playing it as loud as I possibly could. Loud. That's a really important thing. Let's mm -hmm. get onto that in a sec. Yeah. Um, Jim, any breaks? Well, it, it, it used to be more like a, a trench or a chasm because uh, it, it included, it used to be the G below middle C and the G flat. Those are, the G was partially there. The G flat was just not there. And so basically from A flat to F, it was just a real gamble. And I'd have to take a, a breath to reset and, and find some excuse. And so I thought this is never going to work. So what I did was push the brake up into basically as as Francois said iron it so it's not a break so now I now I'm comfortable to play on a low setting as high as an E above of above middle C and and then push it back down so just depending on how loose you are how stiff you are you can kind of decide where you're going to need to shift so I feel comfortable to go over that traditional area that used to be a break but it used to be really really hard um, A's were starting to get hard as Rachel said G's was just pretty bad g flat gone uh until you could take advantage of f horn so just basically iron it out and and i'm with joe push the jaw a little bit and just muscle muscle through it and practice being able to play middle c d e loudly on the low setting that just kind of helped just kind of erase that that break idea but yeah but it used to be a, a the 38th parallel it was there's no there's no crossing it easily without a weapon. I don't know. A tank. It's, hard, it's hard to believe if you if I, if you know you're playing, but um, yeah, no, I, I I know exactly what you're talking about. Denise, how about you? Because uh, you spent many years as fourth fourth horn of Philadelphia, um, mm -hmm. and now you're doing a lot of solo stuff. Uh, did you find did you find that sort of power low horn stuff that you were doing every day in the orchestra? Um, did that help a break, or do you? I know you have a very special technique of of, of switching. Yeah. Whereabouts is that? Maybe you want to explain that. Well, when I was in school and probably up until I was about 30, it was right at the G, the first note of Shostakovich five. So the, that G was on my low set and everything above that was on my high set. And it felt very limiting. And so I, I decided to try and work it up. Uh, just as Jim was saying, it's like I, I dragged that low set up a little bit higher. So I have more flexibility. And now I can I can play an A flat still on my high set, but it sounds pretty bad. So for me, there's there's a range. I can play up to probably about an E at the bottom of the treble staff on on my low set. Nobody wants to hear me hold a note. It's not so pretty, but um, yeah. And for me, when I go into my low set, it's definitely bring the jaw out. And I jokingly say that for a lot of people, when they bring that jaw out, their corners come down. So I talk about that frown with, especially with kids to try and give them something a little bit funny to remember so they can work on that. Yeah, yeah good advice. Who, uh, who have I missed anybody, Barb? Yeah, hi. Um, <laughs> same, same thing, like, like everybody here, we were all, you know, high horn players and, and maybe that's just because that's what we were taught. Um, for me, it's more like from between the middle C and the note below, the B natural, right in there. That's where my ironing has to happen. And I think, I think the best thing of this discussion is to tell students that if you have any of these breaks, it's okay. And it's normal because we're all human and we all have similar but different, you know, facial structures. We all have a jaw, we all have two lips and cheeks and this, the muscles and um, it's nothing to be ashamed of really. Uh, just to, to work on it though and to, to not be so worried about it. Um, for me, slurring helps a lot. And, and at the Met, you know, we're always getting the hand, like, you know, to be quiet. Not, not, I always say, oh, he's trying to high five us. <laughs> <laughs> we had, when Claudio Obama used to just go. <laughs> like, like, hold your nose. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, but I think the hand is not a high five. It's more like, like you said, we don't want to hear you guys. Um, so I had to develop the technique to play very quietly, very quickly, which was kind of scary. So if I have something like a middle C and then maybe going down and it's pianissimo, um, I definitely use my low setting. Um, even if I go up a little bit higher, there's there's a kind of a terrifying little thing in Tristan. That, I don't know if you remember that fourth horn. Yeah, song. I know that one. Yeah, yeah. Francois, did you have to play fourth horn in Tristan? No, not yet. 
Uh, no, not yet. Actually, no, no. I would recommend being sick when that happens. <laughs> hey, you know the other one that I it would absolutely make me die. I would rather be sick for the whole week than play the the second horn bit in Master Singers that goes do 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 do. It's the same thing. <laughs> yeah. All by yourself. Yeah. Oh. Oh. And and the problem is that it's usually with if you play with anybody at all, it's with somebody on the other side of the pit. So you don't even hear them. So it's like, why am I sitting here playing these repeated, you know, tenuto whatever notes, um, F sharps and stuff. So yeah, that that's one of my biggest challenges for sure. Speaking of, speaking of scary Wagner operas, it's actually Wagner's birthday today, which is why this is my tribute to Wagner, the Valkyrie uh, hats, best I could do. And actually, uh, Adrian has a tribute to Wagner as well. Can you show us? Get that in there. <laughs> Bye, Reuter Bier. Oh, oh Francois. Cool. Show us again. I, I took my, my biggest book to, to put my laptop on. <laughs> <laughs> That's where it went. <laughs> Very mine, flat. mine have vegetarian cookbooks oh, my, my, yeah, on it. Um, what, what have you got in the back? What flag is that actually, Barb? It's, I think it's Bavarian, right? Oh yeah, bye. Yeah. <laughs> Greg, do you have anything Wagnerian or do or your uh, dogs what do you have? Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh come yeah, on. So okay. We'll use them for later. Okay, we'll we'll, yeah. we'll for, and everybody watching. By the way, we have some real prominent people. We have we have Stefan Yatsilski is watching. Oh, so, nice to see you. No high horns allowed, but it's really nice of you to watch. <laughs> Alex Love is watching, Kayla Torres is watching, Rania Nashat, who's a horn player from Baghdad. Yeah. Um, a woman in a true man's world, and I admire her so much. So hi to Baghdad, Rania. Um, we also have Hilary Harding from the President's Own Band, um, who's watching, which is great. And Jez, well, Jez, I told you, fourth horn in, um, in, uh, in Birmingham. Saar Berger from Ensemble Modern, and Sergei. <laughs> Sergei Naka, Nakar, Nakaryakov. You know Sergei? He's a trumpet player and he, steal, he steals all our pieces. He plays all sorts of horn stuff on, on the trumpet, so that's a little bit mean. Um, but anyway, lovely to see you. So um, people are saying thank you very much for all these, all these tips. I just wanted to ask you guys something. Um, I found when people say, what is the secret of, of low horn playing? How can you play so loud? And then you, then you say, well, do you practice loud? Oh no, why not? Doesn't sound very good. Okay, <laughs> so so this is this is like the, the vicious circle. Um, has practicing, I find it incredibly beneficial to practice the low notes loud to get over to iron out that break. Joe, what, what do you think? Well, of course you have to practice loud, but like any um, notes, I start at a comfortable dynamic and I do long tones and I try to open them up. I don't, I don't force them at the beginning. At some point you have to force and really whack it, but I think it's important to work on quality and opening it up. Yeah. Yeah, no, absolutely. Of course. I mean, quality is, is good, but I found actually breaking in notes. I don't know. Anybody comments? Yes. I mean, you, you don't need, we, we want always to have the a big, French horn sound when we play in the middle register or maybe in the high register, but I, I have a feeling that you don't need it for the low register. You need more, and Sarah, you told me you need more focus and maybe open the hand a little bit more. And actually, I had a very, very good exercise from Stefan Dorr years ago, and he told me to practice without the hand just to have this feeling that everything is uh, buzzing, and so you can develop your, your amateur a little bit more. Ah, okay. I don't. I can't remember which exercise that is. He's got so many good ones. <laughs> but but like literally, he practices his low range every day. It's like I don't know. It's like with you guys. I have to practice my high notes because if I didn't, I wouldn't have any left ever. Jason, you're nodding. Oh, absolutely. I I get my low practice at work, and at home, when I play etudes, I I rarely. I mean, unless something specific is coming up that that i need something special for i usually try to do things in the mid and upper range to balance things out um and it's also much more fun and <laughs> um, there's a question Maybe oh, I, oh, yeah, oh, yeah i wanted to say 
the way I look, I expl I try to explain always. I, I like to, to talk about priorities always. For me, like the first priority in the law is, of course, in, in every register we play, but even more in the law, I like to, to, to see like the first priority, like stability. And then maybe a nice sound, of course, but maybe the fourth of the fifth priorities should be like, like to play loud. But I think now the people want to play loud and, and maybe that's amazing for the warming up room. But maybe when you, when you, I, I think no horn section in the world wants like the blah, 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 blah. It doesn't matter no, how loud no, no. you play. So, so I recommend always like to keep this purity, like to play like with stability. And then from there, like build up the, like you say, no, like build up the, the dynamic. But of, al of always, course, you're absolutely right. Always with, with stability. And that should be like the, the step one. And then from there, like build up the, and not to try yeah. to play too loud too soon because then it goes like, yeah. Blah, blah, blah. No, I, I agree. And I want to make sure that it wasn't misunderstood what I said. When I, for example, when I was at the opera, I spent 10 years at the State Opera in Berlin and then um, got, uh, was auditioning for the job in the Berlin Phil and I knew that they thought I couldn't play loud enough. And I couldn't, you know, in the opera, as you say, Barb, you always get the hand, you know, it's just like, you know, psh, um, Baron Barham, you do not want to get on the bad side of him. So um, <laughs> we didn't play too loud. And um, but so I really needed to I needed to beef it up. But I'd already ha I already had that 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 stability from having a job for so long. But I had to beef it up and to beef it up. I had to practice loud. But you always have to play with the best sound you can. Yeah. I mean, that's just even as low horn players. Right, guys? Yeah. Yeah, I, I think the biggest advice is just if you if you you lose it, if you don't use it, you know, and the more you use it, the low range, it the better it will get just like lifting weights or something, you know, it'll, it'll get better. So practice scales, maybe the Perez scales down the octave, slur it if you can't play it to get through the breaks and then and then really staccato with it with much more air than you think uh, you would need. But there, is a solution, there is a solution for the sound, you can practice also stop notes. In the low register, and then you don't have to to carry about the, about the sound, about the qualities, just to have the a good feeling, and maybe develop even more, and just stopping. That's a good idea. Yeah. That's a really great idea. I've got a very interesting question. I'm not quite sure. I'm just trying to imagine this. Maybe you guys can help. From amateur shipping, he says, so it should feel like opening the embouchure up from behind, where the jaw hinge is, like a snake swallowing an egg. <laughs> Any, anybody, anybody, uh, <laughs> I, I'm not quite sure. Anybody want to uh, take that one? Well, for, what for me, I egg? would say that that sounds, what kind of, egg? well, it sounds like, uh, it sounds like they're just trying to open their jaw way too much. And for me, that doesn't work. For me, the sticking out of the jaw works better than just completely opening the jaw. And that's, as I think Barbara was saying, everybody's a little bit different. We all have different physical setups, different uh, oral cavities. So whatever works for you to give you the sound that you like, do that. But for me, completely opening my jaw just doesn't work. Jim, you had something? Yeah, you know, I think b besides the, 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 the constant aspect of beautiful sound and even sound, I mean, that, that's, that's a given that has to be there. But um, I'm with 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 adrian about, about stability because for me you, you have to be able to have this exactness of attack and sustaining i mean there are a lot of lyrical studies to work on tone and just general overall flexibility that gets back kind of to the gap but if you can't play things solid uh with some sort of pop and snap it, it's it will never be loud and and that's something i learned sitting next to and close to dan gingrich because it was a beautiful big sound but it, it had a smack and a, and a power behind it like nothing else. And uh, listen to Bernstein's uh, Shostakovich 7 recording uh, when he's playing fourth horn. And, and that, that's a good example of this, this, this insistence on really tight, uh, stable, I guess Adrian was saying, playing. I think that's really important. Yeah, no, I to totally agree on that one. And Cher is watching. Hi, Annie. <laughs> Hi. Tom, Tom Varner has said, um, he said, do you, for us low horn players, do, you ever, do we ever think bass trombone, a beautiful bass trombone? Also, I don't know. What do you guys say? When, when I'm playing the Wagner tuba, then I definitely listen to the tuba because, you know, they're often in, in unison, but not so much bass trombone. No, not so, not, not so much. Player. <laughs> I sat in front of Charlie Vernon, 
the first time I played with Chicago Symphony, Jim. I will never forget that experience. <laughs> when he when he breathed in, all my hair was sort of like he goes <laughs> like like a feather in the wind, right? Yeah, I tell you, uh, no, no, not quite, not quite uh, bass drummer. But here's a great question. Um, yeah, Matthew Hyslop says Dan Gr Gingrich is his favorite Beethoven ninth fourth horn solo. Yeah, Dan Dan could just do any anything. He really he really can. Um, so Hannah would like to know what are the best exercises to improve articulation in the low range? Does anyone have any sort of secret tips? I asked you guys to all bring your favorite etudes for low horn. Maybe we can go through those and, and talk a little about articulation because low horn, when I, when I started sort of specializing a little bit in low horn, I realized most low horn players sounded muddy, you know, it was just like, and the, the, the absolute exception to that rule was clear, my predecessor who, who we've said on the horn hangouts already, he played like this. Yeah. And while I could never play like that, we need our, we need our hands. Um, it was, it made it suddenly, I was listening to low horn that was clear, Manfred clear, get it? Oh, sorry. Hmm. Um, so exercises, etudes, Greg. Well, I, I remembered uh, when I was in Chicago and I was uh, talking to Clevenger about playing low horn and he's he he, he brought up the story about how when uh, dan gingrich won the fourth horn spot or moved to fourth horn he played he was playing everything down an octave like mozart solos and a2s anything you could play and i started thinking about that as well and so i think when you play a mozart concerto you you're thinking about your articulation and all that stuff so when i play whatever uh solo could be give me some a melody out of the arbin's book or whatever I try to play it as if it's an octave higher as far as articulation. So you don't sound muddy like you were talking about. So just try to, and especially playing second horn, you want to try and match the first horn player's articulation. So it helps you to play things that you would play an octave higher, just normally play that an octave lower and try to play exactly that same kind of articulation. That's, that's, that's how it worked for me. I, I'm so. going to write down all these. This is great. I'm going to use all of this. Anyone else got anything for us? Next? Yeah, Jim, go. I think, uh, you know, back to the bass trombone uh, imitation idea, I, I don't, for me, that, that, that presents kind of like a, like a floppiness of tone as opposed to making rich an octave lower than, than the first horn part, as, as Greg just said, that's kind of along those lines. But for me, um, articulation, I know some may, may consider the Neuling things just etudes. For me, they're not. They are introduced to me by, by Zyfert, who uh, could play anywhere and everywhere, um, kind of like Dan and approached them in a very lyrical style. So for me, those are a really go-to thing because you can, you can really sustain things, work on your tone, uh, work on, uh, who was it? Was it, was it um, Jason who said about the stop notes, I think, in, in bass class, somebody said about stop Francois. notes. Francois. Francois, yeah, absolutely. In, in those Neulings, there's a, lot, there's a fair amount of stop notes, but the articulation aspect of, of the Neuling, and don't look at it as a scale study and arpeggio study. Look at it as a piece of music. Make it make it lyrical. Although the demands are spe you know specific uh, centering of notes. For me, that's that's the thing. Also, also I think um, I mean there's lots of things I, I I do and work on. Something from Schweikert's warm up, um, number four from the Ward Fern book. I don't know if anybody is, uses that very often. That's a, that's a lyrical thing. I don't prefer Rochu. It's it's a little too. A slippery for me it's great for tone and flexibility but i i i think slippery i like that, <laughs> that just for me, just for me. I mean, it's a great no but it's great it, it's it's great music making you know the hackerman things are also kind of a good combination of all those things a little not as dry as noily yeah <laughs> Great. Barb, yeah. Yeah, I, I just have three things that I think are, are amazing. Um, from Julie Landsman from the Caruso's, there's these. Julie's called... watching, by the way. Hello, Julie. <laughs> <laughs> so the the noodles, they're called noodles, and it, and it's not pasta, but um, it's connecting the higher uh, register, like a, a second line G with a G below, slurring that, and then articulating the low G is fantastic. Uh, from Michelle Baker, the Remington, it's a trombone exercise, the Remington, where you slur all these arpeggios and then you articulate the crap out of them. Um, and then the third thing I would say is from, from Rosen Cavalier, if you can get the fourth horn part, and there's uh, a little duet with the tenor, which you know about, which was actually on the Berlin Phil audition. Um, it's this really wonderful moment where you're, it's, it's all legato, it takes a tremendous amount of air and you just slur from low to mid to low to higher. And it's, it's a great way to get your flexibility going. 
if, if any of you watching this on the website can put any of the links to these or can you repeat the, the, the names of the books um, um, so that we've got them all for reference later, I certainly want you to write them all down so that I can get the ones that I don't have. Not maybe Roshu because they're slippery, um, but maybe there's an ISMP and MLP link to the to the Rosen Cavalier. I think there is. Maybe someone could put that on because that's a really good thing. We've all got to practice that tomorrow. Rachel, what what would you what what have you got in your low horn well, bag of tricks? I I also I like the Roshu for air and tone and ease of playing. I just I think they're very like meditative, lovely. Um, I play everything down the octave. I like to play the the cling, the Mueller, Galet, those, you know, kind of standard etudes as written and then also an octave below. Um, as an American, I don't know about you guys, I play a lot of B-flat horn in the orchestra and in real life down there, um, which I think helps a ton with the the clarity and getting the same kind of ping in the articulation that helps with, you know, the actual job of matching. But I think, you know, that sometimes students think that you don't you can't be musical down in the lower range mm. and, it, and it really should just it should just sound like the same thing i think here yeah. here i completely agree with that every time i hear mm. people come play for me their number one objective in the low range is to play like loud and very muscly and uh i like the idea of just taking everything that you work on any kind of uh, concerto any etude and play it down an octave or two and work on the same musical ideas same clarity that you uh that you would work on if you were in the appropriate octave but for me the the book i like the most is that is the hackleman book uh his low his low book i feel like it has a nice combination of lyrical but also some articulated some jumpy some uh, more linear. So for me, that's that's one of my favorite books. Yeah. Joe, do you have a favorite book? Sorry, Adrian. No, it's fine. Mm, mm, no, I like to just take the standard etudes down an octave or transpose them yeah. into C or whatever. Yeah. You don't you don't take specific low horn. Do you play more second or do you play more fourth or is it is your job tifus horn low horn? It's low horn, but I play second 80% yeah. of the time. Yeah, yeah. So you, you would recommend taking taking standard etudes and just putting them down down an octave and being as musical as you can, like Denise, Denise suggests. It's absolutely fantastic advice. Yeah. Yeah, playing loud down in the low range is fun, but it's really not everything. And the last thing we want to hear in audition is someone that goes bop, bop, bop in the in the noiling uh, cadenza. That's the last thing we want to hear. We want to hear all the notes in the middle. <laughs> Adrian, you wanted to say something. No, no, I, I just wanted to say I love also the Huckleman, the Huckleman ones. Also, like the lyrics parts and, and for to work this kind of articulation things which which are more difficult in the low register like like Barbara said like to go from 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 the legato feeling like to open up and maybe the people fo focus really much to play short in the low but always like to play with with twice or three times more air so yeah. the Hackleman one I, I Hackleman like is good I love the cling low ones da, 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 it's like an opera aria there's a couple of really nice ones. and then the Vern Reynolds Francois, have you got any secrets for us? You play, you play more second horn, right? More second. I actually only play fourth horn in, in Bayreuth in the festival, and um, I I learned uh, over the years to play also with more articulation. I I studied with Marie Louise Neunecker, um, uh, Adrian too, and she wrote this one like the first issue. It was like two thousand four, and she wrote. Mundwinkel and Unterlippe. Okay. And, then, and I, <laughs> I checked like six six months later. Mundwinkel. It's can like you corner. explain? Can you explain that to us? The corners and the chin. Corners Mundwinkel. And the yeah, because we 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 have the tendency to 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 believe that we we have to open the mouth to play in the low register, but we only have to to vibrate the lips in, in a, at a lower frequency than than in the high register. So we need more space. And actually, I use my mouthpiece. I really lock in my mouthpiece to to and then open my open my jaw. So I don't open and then put the mouthpiece. I go in the mouthpiece and I try to have as much uh, meat 
lip meat as, as possible to have something to vibrate. And I think that the, the lower lip is only there for the stability. Mm. So I'm going in the middle and then down to have a stability and then let the, the upper lip vibrate more. Mm. That's yeah. really good advice. Absolutely. Good old Mary Louisa. She was always about the, the being the chin down. Her that was a really big thing, wasn't it, with my, for her for her yeah. teaching. Chin down. But also I find some students they think they think, okay, they've got a and then here's too tight. And if here's too tight, you can't get your chin down. It must be more of a tall, mustn't it? So yeah. less, uh, less is more. Less is more. <laughs> Oh, we've got a, we've got a, we've got a gate crasher. We have an imposter. <laughs> we've got an oh. imposter. Wait, oh. he's going to play. <laughs> oh. What note is that? <laughs> is that a horn? That's above my break. <laughs> I think he's still playing. Uh -oh. <laughs> so high we can't hear it. <laughs> an imposter in our midst. Hello, Stefan. I'm not here. You're not Sorry. here. You're I, was, I, was for, I was searching for the trumpet thing, like the high C <laughs> and the buff. Is that not the Arturo Sandoval trumpet hanger? <laughs> I've told them that you practice your low horn every day as well. Yeah, I do. Here it comes. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> um, we, I think we're going to switch you Nailed off. It. It's Wagner's birthday today. Do you have anything to add to that? Oh, here we go. <laughs> I think I think I'll switch him off actually. Fine. Thank you. Thank you very much for that. Imposters. <laughs> you guys got a screenshot of this. Get a screenshot now before Stefan goes. Imposter, imposter. <laughs> okay. I'm turning him off now. Bye, Stefan. Thank you. Bye, bye. And bye. You can come back when the hangout's finished. We're gonna have a drink. Okay, good. Watching the National Theatre and the other thing. Ah, okay. See you, See you later. <laughs> that was nice, huh? High C. Someone had to play high C. It wasn't going to be me. <laughs> um, Francois, where were we? We're talking about um, um, uh, corners. Who, who, who hasn't? Uh, um, Jason, could you tell us what your favorite etudes are? Uh, I, I hate to say what everyone else has said, but etudes down an octave. I've, I've always used um, these galet, you know, these yeah. 40 trailers. These yeah, were always hard. kind of... Those are hard ones? The unmeasured ones. I love I those. Those are hard. Always, you know, I used to practice these when I, when I was a student, especially I would, I would practice them as they were written and then I would get too tired. And I felt <laughs> like I wasn't done practicing for the day, but I didn't have any endurance left to play it the way I wanted in the high range. So I would just drop them down an octave. And then I found that I could go back to the upper octave for a little bit. And then I would just switch back and forth and try to make them sound similar. And that's something that I, and a lot of students come to me wanting some specific answer, some magic answer. And I just fell into it because I was too tired to play high horn anymore. And so I would practice low horn because that's all I had left. And I always, I found that to be interesting preparing for a low horn audition too, because you can beat your face up for a long time playing low horn stuff. Yeah. And high horn stuff, you have to meter it out a little more carefully. You can't just beat your face up because the next day it won't work. But low horn playing, you can really kind of beat your head against the wall until it sounds the way you want you probably won't damage yourself. So that's mostly my my prescription for low horn practicing. Just play down there a lot. Yeah. And having a lot of music, you know, co-prosh down a fifth, down a fourth, down an octave. And the minute you get sick of that, flip over to something else. Just I I don't stick with one thing too long. I just I just keep going until I like the way it sounds. The great thing over the years, over the last few years, is that we're getting more stuff. We have those low horn jazz uh, etudes that uh, Ricardo did. Um, Richard Bissell wrote that great piece for low horn. Joshua Davis did Matilda. And there's a new one coming out. He's promised us. 
We have a new low horn feature coming, um, a quartet. And there's, uh, Denise has done a lot for, for low horn repertoire. I mean, it's really, we've got great stuff now. I mean, if any of you watching have, have any tips of what we can practice, then tell us. We want, to, we want to know. There's a really good question that I'd like to come back to. It's, it's like 500 questions ago, but I've kept my finger on it because... I thought it was a really good one from Jason Froggett. He said, do you rely more on the sound or on the technique when changing registers through the break range? That's a really good question. Denise, do you have a good answer for that? Uh, the answer is yes. Um, <laughs> it depends on what it is that's lacking when I'm working on it. So if I really feel like I'm, I'm struggling to sort of figure out how to get over the break range or to be smooth through it, then I'm going to try and, as we've said many times, but iron it out a bit. And if my sound is suffering, it feels like the technique is working, but my sound is suffering, I'm going to focus more on that. So it really depends on what is presenting itself to me when I'm practicing something. Exactly. Yeah. Good answer. She's good at this. Great answer. Um, by the <laughs> way, Stefan Yatsilski says only one octave down. Why not two octaves down? Hey, I said two octaves down. Come on, people. <laughs> Jason said hey, I do have, I have another yeah, book that's right. that I don't know if you guys yes, have Yes, I know that book. It's great. I, the, Ken Pope had these at his shop and I don't really, I haven't heard of them other than just running across them, but they're all really short just these little tiny four line etudes and they all Jason, could you hold it up again yeah hold it up again the... it's called earworms earworms by... yeah earworms for low horn and they're all short um and i can practice my germans when i when i read these um but they all have they're cliches they're they're basically one four five one the chord progressions are really basic and i actually think for younger players if you're working on your low range keep the music simple like don't try to approach hard music and take it down an octave play something simple something beautiful so that your ear is already there because then you can be you can critique the sound you you know what you're looking for if it's a familiar tune or an obvious tune i think you're going to get better faster and so i like things that are mostly simple down in the low I don't, I don't try to get too complicated. And in the orchestra, most of our low playing is simple quality. It's whole notes and half notes and quarter notes. It's not, you know, except for, you know, Don Quixote and a few things, it's mostly stability. Yeah. I like what you said, Jason, about the slow practice. Um, I think that's so much more important than trying to speed through things and kind of pretend that your problems don't exist. If you do it slowly, yeah. you can really find slurring slowly from one note to a half note away where the problem is and where maybe a shift is, is occurring or, or a, a break, whatever you want to call it. Um, so that, that you can really pinpoint, ah, here's the moment that it is occurring. And then you can actually have control over it and not be as intimidated as before. I like that. Olivia Martin has posted uh, the, the, the link for the earworms. Um, Michael D says Mozart violin sonata E minor works really well on low horn. I'm going to check that one out. K304. Let's let's get let's check that one out. Um, uh, of course, the um, Bach cello suites uh, uh, in, in in the original key, right? Oh, I think um, and there's a lot of talk going on about our lips. <laughs> People, people are saying that they're trying to see if there are any physical things about us which make us good low horn players. Are our lips thicker? Big, big jaw, square no. jaw. What do you think? I have, I have little. Lips. I have thin lips. Yeah, Joe, you've got, have you got thick lips. Let's see. Thin lips. We thin have lips. got thin lips. You've got thin lips. <laughs> uh, to the end, you've got a beard. You don't count. <laughs> Fran Francois too who else got a beard not me after corona I tell you it's uh... <laughs> that's, that's the after party Jim, <laughs> Jim how are your lips are they made for low horn playing oh thank you darling <laughs> so do you have to have big lips to play low horn is this something we need oh no. No. You know, Norman Norman Schweikert had uh, former second horn uh, CSO had very thin lips. 
like and in and a, and a thinner mouthpiece it was like a razor you could slice salami with that thing and so i don't think so um and i once saw him i once saw him take dale clevenger's shilky what's that pea shooter is it a 97 107 1007 20 is, 27 shilky 27 or whatever yeah the shilky 1027 uh <laughs> micrometers <laughs> opening anyway i one time saw schweiker take dale's mouthpiece and like start on a pedal b flat concert and just work his way down and just hand it back to him because dale was saying in the till the you know the, the written c he said that's beneath my salary and uh you know <laughs> schweiker said that's nonsense. give me that mouthpiece so I don't. I don't think. I don't think there's anything special about about the lips necessarily. I maybe bigger lips are are, are a hindrance, because Schweikert had really thin lips and he was a monster down there. Yeah, he really was. He really was. I think, I think for those who are interested, not me, to adjust the equipment, uh, you know, spread out. Who, who was it? Was it Denise said she had a little wider rim? Yeah. yeah. You know, you can you can find these things that work work to your advantage. But I don't know about the lips. I think, I think it's just. The, the concept of sound that you that you start with and try to expand from those upper octaves down, add some technique and there you go. I think you need enough space inside the mouthpiece that the the width the dia width of the rim. That's where you need the space to be able to open up. You know, it's not necessarily the the the, the thinness of it, but it's the, the mouthpiece. It's the rim that needs to actually encase everything you're working with. I think I don't know what it is with Greg. Uh, Greg, you you have a you have a different setup. Um. Yeah, I might have a, probably a thinner rim. It helps with articulation, I think. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. I think it's whatever works, whatever sound wise works for you. And, and like I said, every, everyone said everyone's setup is totally different because of their their dental structure, their mouth size, everything. So I mean, it's not always a mouthpiece. I'm not a trumpet player, but you just kind of struggle through figure out which mouthpiece works. And now, of course, when it's Alex, I'm going to hold a hold a bag of mouthpieces for that horn as well. But I think whatever works for you, whatever you sound best on, that's how you work. You work it out. Yeah, everyone's asking the mouthpiece question now. They want to know what mouthpiece we all play on, and if there's a if there's a general low horn mouthpiece that will make everybody play low horn well. Okay, here we go. It's a mouthpiece question, guys. Oh, my horn just fell down. That's mine. Mine's pretty dirty, actually. <laughs> mine is a McWilliam one from Tilts with a Paxman 4B rim, so it's quite a sort of quite a sort of round thing. And I think there's muesli from this morning in there. Okay, <laughs> next, Joe, what do you got? Oh, Joe, yours is really big. No, no, Joe, not you're... really. No, it's not. McWilliam it's not... 1 ah. with the gold rim. Middle so of the road. The Mac... So the McWilliam 1 seems to... Pieces. You got because to play the... up to high B and Beethoven 7, etc. Yeah. Got to get okay, so McWilliam way. 1 has two votes. What else have we got? Yeah. Uh, Francois? Oh. <laughs> I have, I have an, this is uh, quite a new brand from Salzburg, Binder and Binder, it's called. And actually you can separate all the pieces and you can you can set up your mouthpiece uh, like you want. I have an 18.3 and a 4.5 uh, bore inside. Oh gosh, I don't know that. Well done. <laughs> okay, okay, Adrian's making a face. What is yours? <laughs> I have a clear, I don't know, a normal one. <laughs> A normal clear. Okay, put a number on it. The eight. No. Uh, one ek. Okay, good. Jason, what you got? Uh, I think Rachel and I play the same. Um, this is an old Scott Lasky ADG. Okay. Um, playing on this for years. So it's about, it looks like feet. that. Yeah. That's I think it's very 80. clean. You all cleaned your mouthpieces. That's not fair. <laughs> Rachel, what did you say? A seventy-five. So mine's OG? mine's seventy-five G, but last year. Okay, um, Denise. Uh, I play a Hauser. Um, it's a GS, which stands for Gene Stanley, uh, and he also has Gene Stan the GSL, which is Gene Stanley Low. But I don't I don't play that. And the the rim is a copy of the Julie Landsman, uh, and the inner diameter is eighteen point seven five. So. Wow. I don't, don't know about what. Why are you making a face? What does that mean? Big, big. big. Okay. <laughs> no, yeah, nothing. like your nose can fall in it. Big. Uh, okay. Well, that, if it works, it works. You know, Jim. What about you? How are we doing? This is uh, this is a copy. 19, 1995. 
I was made in Japan. Yamaha made it. And it's a copy of an original Farkas mouthpiece before they had all the, the medium cup, medium deep cup, everything. So it's essentially a medium cup, a little bigger than, than their mass produced medium cups. And, and the rim is, is a little, a little sharper on this edge. The, the, the mass produced ones is a little bit more rounded. So a little less articulation possible. So, uh, it's basically the same copy of the same mouthpiece I played since 1972. It was never an experiment. It's just what my father brought home. He's my first teacher. Brought brought home that mouthpiece. Here you go, kid. That's your mouthpiece. And that's what Farkas used. I mean, it was just the middle of the road thing. Email. Jim, did you buy that from Houghton Horns? Because we at the Met Opera Horns, we just did a, a an interview with Houghton Horns, and they were just talking about the same thing. No, this this was 1995. We're on tour. Gail Williams and I went to Yamaha. Oh, to Yamaha. Yeah, they make the best in, in Tokyo. The Yamaha. And, and at, that, them, yeah. at that time, th this this was only available in Japan. Now you can you know gold on the inside there, and they had they had at that time uh, micrometers to the millimeters to trace and copy your your things. I had a lot of copies made here locally. Everyone was different. Um, and Gail played hers that very night in solid brass. I tried and it just tasted bad. So then I had it plated. <laughs> she, she could okay. do it. <laughs> I, I'm just, I'm giggling inside because I'm just thinking, you know, wh who would have thought that a bunch of low horn players would be talking about mouthpieces live on the internet and that people would actually watch. I'm hoping you're all still watching <laughs> that you haven't, you, that you haven't switched off yet, but actually very, people are very impressed with the 18.75. Um, <laughs> And the name and then uh, some really good um, uh, etudes suggestions are still coming in. So we'll, I'll share that all with you. Has anyone not shared their mouthpiece who would like to? Fine it today, is Joseph Clear. That's what Andrew plays on. In That's Japan. right. So yeah. I'm trying the Joseph Clear, but I've played in McMillian McMillian one for years. Yeah, you uh, did. Uh, I my remember rock, that. my rock as well. I played in the, that, and then it was easy conversion over to the Alex. But then. I've been trying these clears, and so I'm not sure if I've singled out. The one I'm playing right now is the 2CKA1, which I don't know what that means. Okay. I just grabbed well, a whole handful of them from the store and been trying them out, so I don't know. I haven't decided on one yet. Okay, well, good. This is this is amazing information. I think the mouthpiece orders are going to go up tomorrow for all these all these mouthpiece makers. Okay, last one, Barb, and then we're getting on to the last question of the night. Okay, so again, uh, it's the Olifant A10. Uh, only for okay, there we okay. go. Yeah, AW rim, which is, I think, got it. Good. Okay, so, and, and Alia Matson wants to know okay, just really quick, favorite low horn excerpt? Go, who's first? Mean, meaning you can play it or you can't play it? No, no, we're not. <laughs> it, it, we don't know. <laughs> Just your favorite one. We don't have to play it. Or I know, I know, I have a lot of favorite ones that I do be there. They would only be my favorite if I didn't have to play them. Um, okay, favorite one and, and nightmare one. Okay, anything in the ring cycle. Just practice that stuff. That's great. Um, nightmare one, I think we already discussed. Maybe yes. the <laughs> so Jim? for me, my favorite one is uh, Brahms Haydn Variations, the second horn, parts variation six. I absolutely love that uh, that excerpt. And my least favorite one is the stupid little two measure solo in Don Juan. Oh, and Billy took it I on hear tour every year <laughs> for like my first five years. And I was like, oh my God, please make it stop. So why is that so hard for us? Can you can you explain that? Why? It, it just is. Well, for me in that triplet, I mean, I think for most of us, because we discussed where our break where our break is, but for that triplet goes over the break and to make it sound effortless is, is a bit challenging. Um, and uh, so for me, that's it. Plus I got, I have a sheet and if I can find it, I'll, uh, I'll send it on maybe Sarah to you and you can post it somewhere, but I have a sort of a joke. There are like 50 different yeah, fingering combinations for this particular silly yeah. little solo. And yeah. So. Yeah. Good. I agree. And then also if the conductor wants a little, uh, a Rallentando with the second one, you know, yeah. da, da, you've got the first one down, down, da, 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 and you think, oh, and then he goes, da, 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 da. And it's like, oh, come on. I, I hear you. Okay. Next. Well, me, I. I'll go. Uh, oh, you go. Go ahead. I, I join. Oh, I. Yeah, maybe Beethoven third is one I like a lot. Beethoven third. Yeah. Yeah. 
to play also. Mm. And the one I hate is Rheingold. You know it. <laughs> ah, funny like, you should say that. Stay, tu <laughs> stay tuned, everybody. Stay tuned. Um, Joe, how about you? Mm. It's not really solo, but I really like the passage in um, Heldenleben that begins on the low G. Oh, Actually, oh. Beethoven 7, I love it because it has a beautiful solo in the second movement and in the third movement. And so that's my dream. And my nightmare is Bruckner 8, the Adagio. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when those harp, when the harp starts. <laughs> oh, my God. My heart goes like, oh, these harmonies are unbearably beautiful. Do I have to play yeah. them now? Yeah, I know. I know. And that's right after you've had to do all the end of all the first movement and the scale and it's yeah. I hear you. Francois? And my favorite one is Mala 9. And my least favorite is uh, Don Quixote. Ah, uh, because of your break. Yeah, <laughs> Um Rachel. Um, I love Beethoven Seven. Love the first movement. I hate playing the bullfrog solo. The bullfrog solo. <laughs> Yeah, I can't. It's uh, I have trouble getting enough power at the end of it. It's always it feels like frustrating, always. Yeah, I've got a good. T I I I agree that it's really hard to get the power. But when I practice that, when I practice it on the F horn, and then it's even harder, you know, to do that crescendo on the F horn, and mm -hmm. then to ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba -ba, it really is a bullfrog. But if you practice that on the F horn, then it suddenly, if you play it on the B flat horn in the concert. It, it seems like, uh, yeah, a gift. <laughs> Jason, how about you? Beethoven 9 is your favorite. I heard you play it in the summer and it was great. Oh, thank you. Actually, that probably is my favorite musical moment on fourth horn, you know, because aside from the nerves, which are always there, I mean, it's a, if you do that piece once or twice a year, you're going to be nervous, but the music is so beautiful. I mean, of all the Beethoven slow movements, that's one of the greatest. Um, so that's kind of a savior. But, but J Jason, can you really enjoy that? Because I must say, I've never really enjoyed the, the first half of the slow movement of Beethoven 9. Because it's yeah, like, I don't the minute the, minute the second bassoon it, well, starts, I hear. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, it's funny. I've talked to our second bassoon and she gets just as nervous for that. <laughs> so everyone's getting nervous and the great thing about the fourth horn part in that is that it's it weaves in and out of so many other lines it's there's really only one part that everyone in the orchestra notices and it's the bar where everyone quits so I've I definitely learned my lesson touch that bar beforehand make sure you feel confident because you can chip another note somewhere in the solo in in the five minutes but that's the only bar that the string players will even know that you were that you were playing. Otherwise, the problem is, if, if the they're well if, they, if they're well brought up string players, they will not turn around. Most <laughs> oh, my guys, they they'll turn around. Stefan. They yeah. thought it was Stefan. They just thought, yeah. okay, the, the, yeah, they, they was just the, yeah, okay, who? Well, well, you played that. What? Oh, you just have that bar. The fourth horn solo is one bar. That's what everybody thinks. Yeah, exactly. But my nightmare, that I think the one that I hate the most is Brahms' tragic overture, the second horn part. Uh -huh. The fourth horn part, for me, sits all right. It's, but the second horn part in D is worse. And the orchestra is so thick and loud there that you it's like you got your tail between your leg afterwards because you think, man, <laughs> I should have prepared for this better. <laughs> but luckily, it doesn't come up very much. <laughs> Okay, uh, who have we? Jim, did you tell us yours? Um, I just make sure I'm on seniority leave when, when the tragic overture comes up, so I can't put that on my, <laughs> I can't put that on my list of because you know I just don't play it. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> now that's that's up there. Um, you know, it used to be uh, the 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 dreaded one used to be Bruckner four in the slow movement, uh, post chasm, post break those G's. It just was really hard, and it was just a mental thing. Um, but my favorite would, would be um, Siegfried Adil. Just that's, to me, that's the ultimate goal, just to get everything in sync, the breathing, the tone, and every, every night is different. You can't make this phrase length tonight. What are you going to do? Um, the one I really dislike, it's, it's you know, it's okay, but I, it, you know, I'm okay, but if I never play it again, is, is bum, bee, bum, 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 in the Eroica. <laughs> I can't. 
Food, 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 food. I can't yeah. stand that. I'm never satisfied with it. So it's hard to make that one sound nice, isn't it? And where do you breed for the low B and secret idyll? I've tried everywhere, every combination of, of taking your breath. Where, where? Where, but, but before, uh, before, before the slur down, you mean before the no. slur down or what you? <laughs> and everywhere you breathe, everyone can hear it. There, there's, there's one, there's just only one place to do, to do it when the, when the clarinet has a little spasm and that's your moment because the focus, <laughs> the focus goes to the, to the show off and that's your chance and don't, don't pass it up. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody watching on Facebook and on the website, it's been amazing to have all your all your feedback. We couldn't, of course, go into an awful lot of detail. I'm just so, so happy and proud that these amazing low horn players have all joined us here today. They're all such great friends and such amazing players. And um, and I'm sure you want to join me in thanking them all for, for their time. And as I said right at the beginning of the Hangout, isn't it amazing that low horn players are even doing a Hangout and that you're watching it? Because <laughs> a few years ago, horn hang low horn was just something that the high horn players did when they couldn't get the high notes anymore. So now it's a real art, and I'm really proud of it, and I'm proud of us. And um, and I want to stay proud of us in a minute. We thought because it's Wagner's birthday, we would like to play you out. And what better way to play you out? Yeah, everyone's getting their horns and their Wagner. Turn on my my Valkyrie. I'm not gonna. I there we go. Right. There we go. So, for those of you, for those of you, um, okay, well, that, all right, then I'll, I'll wear it. Okay. For those of you um, about to do selfies and screenshots with, with us, this would be your moment. Um, and where are the animals, by the way? Everyone's had animals. Where are they? Mine are sleeping at my feet. Okay. Can you show us? Oh, we'll do that. We'll, we'll do, we'll, yeah. we'll, I would just want to see. And where, Barb, where's yours? Oh, he's I, gone. I, I he's an English bulldog, so he's probably sleeping with his tongue sticking and out. And Ruby? Where's Ruby? She's, I think, outside in the backyard garden. Oh, man. I was, okay. Well, oh, <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> There's one. And Adrian, where's your cat? Your cat's oh, very famous. Brother. Okay. Are we going to get the animals now? That's all. Oh. Yeah, yeah. I want to see. This, cat's, this cat travels oh. with him to Berlin when he comes and plays. Oh. They're hard. Come on. Greg, they're probably scared of your hat. Probably. <laughs> so the hats are because it's Wagner's birthday. Um, and we're going to play you out. There we go. Hello, pussycat. Oh. No. Oh. Yeah, she's not impressed. She's not impressed. But at least she's been on the horn hangouts. Is Ruby there? She's coming. She's coming. I sent she's her a going. text. She'll, she'll be on the way. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what Greg. Oh, that was Greg's head. I thought it was his dog. Yes. Oh, there, there. <laughs> Wake up! Uh, I don't know. I have now ruined. Ru oh, there he is! I oh. Love that dog. oh, oh, I love that dog. Oh, sweet thing. He's licking your mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. And Greg, there's can you show us your teeth? Oh, there's, there's one. Riley. There is. That's Riley. Riley. Hello, Riley. Riley. Come here. Oh, big brother, big brother. I'll turn your face there. See your face. Aww. Australian shepherds. Hello. They are so cute. They are enormous. Um, and I hope everyone, you can see uh, Greg's T-shirt. He it says LA Phil on tour, but we've black. He blacked out. Amy Jo, yeah. his wife, uh, tape out on tour because of course none of us are on tour but you know you right. guys we only we only saw each other on tour and isn't it this is the one good thing about this terrible virus is that we can connect like this because we never would otherwise we just wouldn't have it's so cool okay right so here we go ready we are going to play you out of this low horn hangout the best way we know how or maybe it's the worst way we know how this is how <laughs> wagner intended the beginning of Rhine Gold to sound. Right? Ready? <laughs> Eighth horn starting now. <laughs>
your horn out, horn hang out audience. That was for you on Wagner's birthday. Thank you for joining us, everybody. Adrian, Barbara, Jim, Joe, Francois, Jason, Denise, Greg, and Rachel. I love you all. Thank you so much. You're my low horn heroes. Thanks, guys. <laughs> See you next time on the Ruby. On Monday, Radek Barbarak is joining us. Woo! Oh. So uh, I do, he's never done a horn hangout and we're very excited to have him on the horn hangouts. So I hope you can all join us and you can all watch. Radek's just done a concert with a mask on. I don't know if you saw that. Uh, he's literally played with his mask on. It's very impressive. Anyway, you guys, you're the best. Um, hang on when we go offline because we're going to have a nice drink together, right? Okay. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Bye, everybody. So lovely to see you all. Thanks for joining us. See you next time. Bye. Bye.